Trisomy 21 and how it occurs at the molecular level. Trisomy 21 is a type of Down syndrome, which is one of the most common genetic disorders. In the U.S. alone, about 6,000 babies are born with Down syndrome each year, which means one in every 700 babies born is affected by Down syndrome. Most commonly, Down syndrome is known to cause characteristic physical features, intellectual disability, and developmental challenges for those affected. Due to these, people with Down syndrome can have a variety of complications including heart defects, gastrointestinal defects, immune disorders, sleep apnea, obesity, and spinal problems. These complications primarily occur due to the lack of proper intellectual and physical development. But how does it happen? What causes it? Let's explore this question in a bit more detail. To begin, Down syndrome is classified into three types, trisomy 21, translocation Down syndrome, and mosaic Down syndrome. Although the symptoms and resulting behaviors in the affected individuals might be similar for all these types, the originating mechanisms vary drastically. We will be focusing on the molecular mechanism that causes trisomy 21, which is the most common type of Down syndrome as it is responsible for 95% of the Down syndrome cases. A lot about how trisomy 21 occurs can be derived from its name. Trisomy is known as the existence of three chromosomes. Chromosomes are essentially a tightly packaged form of our DNA, the very blueprint for what makes us who we are. Normally, almost all the cells in our human bodies have 46 chromosomes. Well, to be more precise, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We get half of our chromosomes from our biological mother and the other half from our biological father. The name trisomy 21 implies the existence of three chromosome 21s rather than two. This extra genetic information is often the causal factor in other types of Down syndromes as well, but what makes trisomy 21 unique is the molecular mechanism which causes the inheritance of an extra chromosome 21. The mechanism is actually an error in the process known as meiosis. Meiosis is a type of cell division that replicates egg and sperm, which are our sex cells that we use for reproduction. These cells are also referred to as gametes. As mentioned earlier, most of our cells in our body have 46 chromosomes. When reproducing, if we were to simply combine the gametes from both the parents, it would result in a cell with 92 chromosomes. That is simply not viable because it would just be too much extra genetic material and that would interfere with the proper development of the cell. This is where meiosis comes in. During meiosis, the number of chromosomes in each parent cell is reduced by half. Our gametes, unlike the other cells in our bodies, undergo meiosis so that they can only have 23 chromosomes. This is perfect because now when a male gamete with 23 chromosomes combines with a female gamete with 23 chromosomes, it will result in a zygote, which is essentially the first form of a baby with 46 chromosomes. It is an error during this chromosome reducing mechanism that causes trisomy 21. Let's take a closer look at meiosis. It can be split into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 starts with the normal gamete. The chromosomes are duplicated and then split up. Meiosis 2 follows right after where the chromosomes are once again split up. It is during this splitting up of the chromosomes where an error can occur, causing the chromosomes to not properly separate. This is known as non-disjunction. It can happen during either meiosis 1 or meiosis 2. It results in gametes with an abnormal number of chromosomes. Specifically for trisomy 21, it is a failure of properly separating chromosome 21 that results in a gamete with two copies of chromosome 21. When this gamete is fertilized with another gamete, the resulting zygote ends up having 47 chromosomes, 22 chromosomes pairs but one triplet of chromosome 21. Although non-disjunction in meiosis 1 is a lot more common than meiosis 2, both can result in abnormal zygotes. Moreover, non-disjunction is more common in female gametes. However, regardless of maternal or paternal origin, 
An abnormal gamete will result in an abnormal zygote. Several studies have been done to research the risk factors of trisomy 21, and one of the most widely studied risk factors is maternal age. The chance of a woman giving birth to a child with trisomy 21 increases with age. In fact, this pattern has been observed in other types of trisomy as well. This supposedly occurs because older eggs, the female gametes, are more prone to errors during meiosis compared to younger eggs. This does not mean that younger women cannot give birth to a child with trisomy 21. Studies have simply established that it is statistically more likely for older women to have pregnancies affected by the syndrome. In addition to risk factors, research continues to be done on diagnosis and treatments as well. There are several prenatal screening tests available that can look for markers suggesting the presence of Down syndrome. These include amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling, which essentially analyze the pregnancy to check for those genetic markers. If you're thinking about undergoing these procedures yourself or for more information, it is strongly recommended that you discuss this matter in more detail with your doctor or a genetic counselor. As of now, there is no cure for Down syndrome. However, there are symptomatic treatments that can help those affected with Down syndrome improve their quality of life and better deal with the complications. For those that experience specific complications such as heart defects or gastrointestinal defects, relevant procedures can be performed to restore function in these organs. In addition, physical, occupational, and speech therapy can help with the intellectual development of a child with Down syndrome. Early intervention via special education and work programs specifically designed for those affected by Down syndrome, can significantly assist in improving their quality of life. All in all, our progress in terms of understanding trisomy 21 and Down syndrome has been very promising. Several organizations such as Down Syndrome Resource Foundation and Global Down Syndrome Foundation have taken initiative in leading the charge, making the future brighter for those affected by Down syndrome.